Ladies and gentlemen, today, to me, it's long overdue, but I have uh, one of the greatest, in my opinion, in judo, not only just American judo, and belongs to one of the greatest generations ever, the 90s and the 2000s, world champion, first American judoka to get an Olympic medal in Atlanta, and later in Athens. Today, I have with me Jimmy Pedro. Sensei, welcome. Thank you so much, Shadi. It's a pleasure to be on with you and talking judo. So, how do you feel judo it is now in terms of these little subtle aspects like group fighting, the stuff that only us judoka see? I mean, it's it's. Um, I mean, to be successful in the sport, you have to you have to have everything, right? You have to be very strong with your grips. You have to have good tachi waza. You have to have good newaza, and you have to have transitions where you go from standing to newaza seamlessly, right from the grip to the attack to finishing them on the ground. And if you hesitate at any spot, that's where you you get in trouble in judo, right? You know where you have to think. So it has to become just part of your part of your essence, part of the way you flow has to be sequential like that. And you have to also be able to adapt to whatever resistance or whatever reaction your opponent is giving you. That's why I think that's what makes judo so special. It makes it so difficult. There's so many variables in, in the sport. If you look at jiu-jitsu, right, they, if you take the takedown game out of it all, all together, you could just do jiu-jitsu. You don't have to be able to take anybody down on your feet, and you could be world champion in jiu-jitsu. You know, it's about and it, now you're playing just on the ground. So you've taken a whole set of combat away where you don't have to do you don't have to know anything. You just have to become a ground specialist. Doesn't make you a complete fighter, but it makes you really good on the ground and you become world champion. You know, judo, you have to have, you know, you if you're not good on your feet, you're not going to succeed in judo. If you're weak in Nawaza, you can still win a world title, but you know, somebody will find that flaw. Somebody will make it difficult. They'll drag you down into the deep waters. They'll get you to the ground. And the one time they do, the game's over. So you have to, you also have to have a good, strong game, at least defensively, if you're going to be world champion in the sport of judo. Absolutely. And also, if we look at it from a historical perspective, I tend to look at a lot of writings and even books from like the First World War, when or the early students of Kodokan were coming out with books, judo wasn't tachiwaza and newaza. It was nagewaza and katamewaza. Even now in Kodokan, you see the the nomenclature. The techniques are split into nagewaza and tachi uh, and katamewaza or controlling techniques. Why? Because at the time, you can still do waki katami standing up. You can still do cross stroke, get it from the stand up, and just drop your weight many things so the the whole thing with i'm a ground fighter or uh, i only do uh, throwing or uh, takedowns it uh, it really got more popular because of guys like oda how he taught his students to just just drop down and take him and because we only did you know katame was on the ground now we can actually control them and limit a lot of their things that they are good at like throwing and gripping and when uh, Dr. Ferguson, and now how you just said the transition, the transition alone is a world of its own. And that's also, like you said, seamless uh, to go from when you're standing up and you go from either, again, according to, to the rules and legal things, but if you can go from like the stand up and you can choose your way to katame waza and tachi and uh, nage waza, that's also uh, the it's an invisible aspect that uh, it uh, it really is uh, important. The the transitions, Neil Adams often talks about it, like his juji and um, of course uh, Jimmy Pedro with the sankaku, the whole thing. And uh, now, for example, before Muneta Suzuki, uh, that generation, Jimmy Pedro, Mark Hausinger, there were we look at the gripping and there's a lot of dvds out there by them like in the 2000s you see them and it's a lot of good foundation but do i'm not saying it's obsolete but do you think now can you still get away with them with with gripping 
like the, if you've seen the way DVD or housing, uh, how he taught uh, just how to enter for throws, can you like with today's gripping? I've seen it. It looks, it looks surreal almost. It's a very, it, it, it's a battle. And can you still get away with that? I'm not saying it doesn't work. Of course, it's the fundamentals. But say, for example, you're going into war now with, I don't know, a, uh, a Berthier from World War Two or World War One. You can still kill people, but it won't do the job. Yeah, I think, I mean, I think the old generation of judoka could deal with any adversity, right? We could play stand-up judo. We also had leg attacks. We had katagurumas. We had, you know, morote garis. We had to deal with, you know, tewaza, te and we had to deal with a lot of uh, a lot of counter techniques where they could grab your leg and counter you and throw you over. Like, so, you know, I think that generation of judo judoka could deal with any style today. You know, the gripping is less, I think the gripping today is is less fierce than it was back then. And don't really? forget, I do, because you think about the day when I competed, the gi only fell halfway between your elbow and your wrist. Halfway was a legal gi. And you could only fit two fingers inside the gi. That was a legal gi. Today, you have to have 10 centimeters of space through the whole elbow all the way down and the gi has to cover the knuckle of your of your wrist. So it's a much longer gi. It's much easier to grab. And if you break the grips to get today, you get penalized. So just, it, you know, the, the IJF, uh, they want pure judo. They want you to go out there, grab the gi with two hands, and participate in the sport. But it takes away a lot of the throws, and it takes away a lot of the variations that you're going to run into. Judo's is much simpler today than it was way back in the day. I'm not I'm saying it's right. easier, but it's much simpler. Yeah. Yeah. There's less techniques that you can do. And I'm not saying the athletes aren't as good. They're, they're very, very good. But it's a different game altogether, for sure. Uh, but I do think that those players from, if you think about Inoue, you think about housing, or they would still be successful judoka today, just with the style that they played and uh, how dynamic and the diversity that they had to deal with. Mm. It's, that's so interesting you said that because I looked at it from, like, the, for example, in a way, gripping part. It's, a, it's a very subtle. It's, uh, he always kept that moving because a lot of guys were just so much bigger than him. And it, today, like, it just seems a little bit like a lot of his stuff. It just seems so fundamental. Uh, in terms of a tactical, from, tactic stand, from a tactical standpoint, do you think grip fighting has evolved today or no from your era? Well, I mean, it's one of, to me, it's one of the key, it's one of the secret ingredients to success that many, many of the countries and many of the athletes neglect to teach or don't learn and, or don't focus on because it's a, and it was a, an integral part of my game. It was a, a very important aspect to not only my success, but all of the athletes that I trained through the generations, we focused a lot on gripping. And the reason why is because the American judoka didn't have as strong of waza, nage waza, that like the Japanese or like the Russians. We just didn't have the number of athletes, the number of repetitions to perfect the technique like they do. And we didn't have the caliber of athletes testing us on a daily basis to get our level of technique that high. But what we could make up with is we could make up with positioning, with gripping, and putting our hands and our bodies in a specific way that made it very difficult for our opponent to gain control or to off-balance us. So the gripping aspect was really about controlling and dominating the grips. And if you dominate the grips, then you dominate the movement and the technique. And that was a big part of my game and all of my students' games. And I think there's a lot of athletes, when I watch them play, and I see them get thrown, the first thing I say in my head is, man, what a careless, like sort of dumb player. Like, why would you give that grip to your opponent and think you're going to stand there and survive? Like, don't you sense danger? Or don't you know that when you're giving that grip up, the likelihood that you're going to get beat is so much greater? 